In 45 days, I managed to go from looking like this at 205 pounds to this at 215 pounds. And it was quite the insane journey to get here. In early January, I was going through a massive rut. I experienced the worst burnout of my life, and sitting behind a computer screen for around 10 hours a day caused me to develop anxiety, nighttime panic attacks, and other health issues. Because of this, I decided to take a whole month off of lifting weights right before moving across the country to Austin, Texas. By the time I got there, I had lost quite a decent bit of size compared to my previous peak physique. Comparing the photos of my previous peak to now sparked a fire in me that could not be set out. I was ready to get back to peak condition and go beyond what I had achieved with my body the first time I hit my peak. And so, starting in late March, I decided to buy a scale, formulate a new workout plan, and start eating like an absolute animal. There were many ups and downs throughout the 45 days, but finally, in mid-May, I started weighing in at 215 pounds consistently. In this video, I'm going to go over the exact diet and workout plan that made me gain this much size in a realistic amount of time. And stick with me through this whole thing, because at the end, I'm going to give you some critical info on how to make this work for you, as well as give you a gift. With my busy schedule, I wanted to design a workout that would take no longer than one hour, that hit each muscle group twice a week and focused on compound lifts. So I decided to go with a push-pull leg split that incorporated two different types of workouts for the push and pull days. I'll explain that further after I go over each exercise. The first cycle of push day looked like this. Five sets of 8 to 12 reps of weighted push-ups using plates on my back for the weight. Then, five sets of 8 to 12 reps doing dips in between two treadmills using their handles. And I'd use a dumbbell in between my legs to be able to keep progressing in weight. I'd superset that exercise with side lateral raises, since my side delts weren't really getting hit with any other exercises in this workout plan, and I'm trying to be aesthetic. Then there was push day cycle two. These are the exercises that I would do the next time I had a push day on my schedule that week, and then the next week I'd cycle back to cycle number one push day. The first exercise that I'd do on this day was weighted incline push-ups for 5 sets, 8 to 12 reps. It's the same concept as the regular push-up, but I'd use dumbbells as handles so I could get even deeper into the push-up and have an even greater range of motion, and I'd put my feet up on a platform to hit a different part of my chest. The second exercise I'd do is straight bar dips using the Smith Machine Bar for 5 sets, 8 to 12 reps. My gym actually has a weight belt that allows me to add plates onto this belt so I can progressively overload this exercise as well. Now let's get on to the two different pull day workout routines. In cycle 1, the first exercise I do is weighted chin-ups, 5 sets for 6 to 10 reps, again using that weight belt from before. And if you want to get your own weight belt where you can just add plates onto it so you can progressively overload body weight exercises easily, Easier, then I'll leave a link in the description to the one that I use. Then, for the second exercise, I do one arm dumbbell rows, five sets for eight to 12 reps. I'll supersize this second exercise of the workout with either some neck exercises or use the TRX bands to do face pulls for about eight to 12 reps. Then there's pull day cycle two. Exercise one is deadlifts, five sets for five to eight reps. Exercise two is one arm dumbbell rows, five sets, eight to 12 reps. And again, I'd superset this second exercise with either neck exercises or face pulls. Lastly, there's leg day. For leg day, the first exercise always remained the same, as I found it to be one of the best overall exercises for my legs. And that was the pistol squat for 5 sets, 8 to 12 reps. Using dumbbells and having them out in front of you is not only a great way to progress in weight, but also I found it really helps me balance better. And if you can't yet do a full pistol squat, you can do what I'm doing here, which is a pistol squat with some sort of chair or bench below you. Second exercise in this workout is either Smith Machine squats or goblet squats for 5 sets, 8 to 10 reps. And if you want to know which one I decide to choose, it really depends on how I'm feeling that day. Then at the end of the workout, I'll do one ab exercise, like hanging leg raises. So let's look at this whole workout visually so we can understand the concept of cycles. 
A typical week of lifting would look like this for me, with one rest day in between each cycle. The reason I have two different cycles for both push and pull day is because not only am I working different muscles that way, but also the muscles that get worked in one exercise on one cycle get a chance to rest when I do the second cycle. For example, if I wait to do chin-ups again until an entire week after I did them, and instead start off the next pull day with deadlifts, I'm giving certain parts parts of my back more time to recover, and working other parts of my back with the deadlift as opposed to the chin-up. And if you're wondering why I don't have two different cycles for legs, well, legs have always been a strong point of mine, and they've always just looked nice and thick, so I don't really feel the need to. Now that my entire workout is explained, let's move on to the most important part of all of this, my diet. Even if you have the most perfectly planned workout split with the most perfect form and the most perfect amount of sets and reps, it won't mean anything unless you're eating like a beast and getting a wide variety of healthy foods in. I am personally on a plant-based diet, and I have been for five years now, so that's what this diet plan is going to look like. It consists of four meals and just over 4,000 calories. I structured each meal to have at least one high-protein source, a carb source, a fat source, and either fruits or vegetables. I'll show the entire macro rundown at the end. Alright, let's get to meal number one for the day, which is protein oats. This is a super simple recipe to make and perfect for the morning. I just simmer one cup of oats, transfer it to a bowl, add some of this protein milk made with cashews and almonds, which if you can get this, if you can find this brand, it is amazing. Put in one scoop of protein powder, I'll go over what protein I use later, about a third of a bar of chocolate, two tablespoons of peanut butter, and a medium banana. Takes about 10 minutes to make and is packed with calories and protein. Here are the macros. Meal number two, protein spaghetti. After I get back from my workout, this is what I usually eat. I use half whole wheat spaghetti and half chickpea pasta, which is a great alternative to regular pasta if you want a version that has higher protein. I also use half of a vegan sausage. I personally use the smoked apple and sage sausage from the brand Field Roast, about a cup and a half of broccoli, pasta sauce, and tahini. And tahini is the key secret to bulking on a vegan diet. Tahini is made from sesame seeds and is a creamy sauce to add to any savory dish you make. It has 200 calories and 8 grams of protein per 2 tablespoons. And then the absolute GOAT seasoning, nutritional yeast. This is a seasoning with a cheesy-like flavor that has 3 to 5 grams of protein per tablespoon and is loaded with micronutrients. I'll show the macros and micronutrients on screen right now. So it's basically like high protein grated parmesan that I add on top of my spaghetti. I'll just boil the spaghetti, chickpea pasta, and broccoli, and cook the sausage in a pan with one tablespoon of olive oil for more calories. After that, I'll throw it all in a bowl, add some optional cilantro on top, and you are done. Another high protein, high calorie bulking meal. Here are the macros. All right, let's talk supplements. Firstly, the only strictly two workout related supplements that I take are creatine monohydrate and protein powder. Basically, if you don't know what creatine is, it helps to increase energy in your cells, in your muscles, so you're able to push out an extra rep, and it also helps you to build strength and size a little bit easier. I just take about three grams of this per day and I mix it in water. And then there's this, you've already seen it today, which is the protein powder, and both of these supplements are from Vivo Life. Vivo Life is an all plant-based company that I'm actually an ambassador for, and they have the highest quality plant-based supplements on the market. And the reason that I say that is because their protein powder comes with a BCAA blend, turmeric extract to help increase recovery and an enzyme blend so you don't bloat. This is the easiest vegan protein powder that I've found to digest. And it's also one of the best tasting. They also have a more cheaper option on their website just called Vegan Protein. But if you wanna get all the supplements that I use and you wanna gain muscle on a plant-based diet, then the link is in my description. And if you use my code COL10 at checkout, that's C-O-L-E-10, you get 10% off your order. By far the best plant-based supplement company out there. Also, if you get the vegan protein powder, I recommend the salted maca caramel flavor. That's my favorite. You won't regret it. And now, let's talk about the one key mineral supplement that I think just about everybody should be taking, which is magnesium, and specifically magnesium breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Magnesium is one of the most important minerals when it comes to beating stress, fatigue, getting better sleep, and optimizing your testosterone levels. And it's pretty hard to get, especially if you're not on a plant-based diet and you're not consuming a bunch of leafy greens and legumes. And the 
problem with most magnesium supplements on the market right now is they're synthetic or they contain some sort of preservatives. Magnesium Breakthrough by Bioptimizers combines all seven critical forms of magnesium. And when you get all seven critical forms of magnesium, your body gets a serious upgrade from your brain to your sleep to pain and inflammation and muscle tension. I've personally been using Magnesium Breakthrough for a few months now just as some extra added insurance to make sure I'm hitting my magnesium levels because they are that important. And I have found that I fall asleep quicker and the quality of my sleep is also better. So if you are interested in getting a magnesium supplement and optimizing your sleep, your stress, and your testosterone levels, then you can go to the link in the description, which is magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash Cole, and you're going to get 10% off your order. Thank you to Bioptimizers for sponsoring this video. Meal number three is a smoothie bowl. Now the key to getting a nice thick smoothie bowl is to freeze your bananas before you blend them. This is a game changer. It makes the consistency come out like soft serve ice cream. I'll add that to a blender with one cup of frozen mixed berries, some more of that protein plant milk, another scoop of Vivo Life protein powder, and blend. Then I'll just put it in a bowl, add some dark chocolate, two tablespoons of peanut butter, and some pumpkin flax granola, which is great for bulking and using as a smoothie bowl topper. And that's it for that meal. Takes only about five minutes to make, definitely the easiest meal of the day to make. And here are the macros. Last but not least, we have meal number four, which is a nice, delicious, random plate of stuff. First, I get one potato and one sweet potato and chop them into wedges. Then I grab a baking tray and start seasoning. Salt, paprika, garlic powder, chili powder, pepper, one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, and a tablespoon of olive oil. Then I pop that in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for around 25 minutes. While that's baking, I'll get a pan and cook up some tofu. I had this pre-seasoned Moroccan tofu that I wanted to try out, so I added a serving and a half of those along with two thirds cup of mixed frozen vegetables and a few cups of spinach. This didn't take too long to cook, so I just kept it in the pan until the potatoes were done to keep it hot. Then then I transferred it all to a plate and I added some ketchup, two tablespoons of tahini on top, and also a couple teaspoons of this serrano sauce I got that tastes super good. And that was it for that meal. The wedges are so damn good and it's a nice feel good meal to end the day of eating. And here were the macros for that. So in total, I ate just over 4,000 calories, 454 grams of carbs, 172 grams of fat, and 208 grams of protein. As always, if you want loads more of high protein plant-based recipes, you can check out my Instagram, which is seasoned underscore tofu. But don't leave just yet because there are some incredibly important notes that need to be made here. Firstly, I was not weighing and measuring everything like I should have been, and so the actual caloric intake might have been a little higher or a little lower. If you want the most accurate results, do not be like me and make sure to measure or weigh your food. Also, since hitting my 215 pound goal body weight, I have switched to an upper lower body workout. This is where I only do one push and one pull exercise with a superset for both on upper body day and still two leg exercises and an ab exercise on lower day. I personally have found that I recover much better when I train only four days a week and I have found that the lower amount of volume has not hindered my progress. So I would say to try both and see which one works for you. Okay, since you stuck it out till the near end of this video, I have a little gift for you. If you go to the link in my description, you can find a Google Doc which outlines this entire workout routine and full day of eating in detail so you can use it to look back on this info when you need to. Also hugely important, these macros are not going to be optimal for most people. Depending on your gender, height, weight, and activity levels, the amount of calories and protein you will need will greatly differ from mine. If you want to figure out how to calculate that and get a full guide on building muscle yourself, then check out this video where I go into everything in way more detail. As always, thank you to all my patrons on this channel on Patreon. This is where I'm putting out exclusive content and you can talk to me one-on-one -on -one over the phone on there. If you want to check that out, link in the description. Lots of links in the description, so go check those out. I am signing out. I hope that this helped you guys. Love ya. Peace.